Yeah. So he says, uh, Ned says, why can't we just, why can't we sell just regular discs and have the launch party with community plus individual goals? If you like your NFT stamped, you open it on week one. If you like to hoard it, you do. This seems way less complex and accomplishes the same goals the alphas do. Um, I, I don't agree that they accomplish the same thing. The, the whole point is to have a split. Remember, we've got two types of people that are in the community that we're trying to bring into the project. The first is you know, the people that just want to buy really exclusive rare stuff. And then there's the people that actually want to, you know, play a collecting game, play games inside of Alluvium. One of the things that I've been pushing for pretty hard since we've started is we can't just cater for the current Web3 community because otherwise you're just never going to get that mainstream adoption. So where a lot of other projects were like, well, I'll just slap an NFT on it and uh, call it a day with a crappy game. It's just never going to go anywhere, right? You, you have to build something that people are going to actually love. That's the whole reason why there exists uh, more with Aluvatars, right? The first thing that we decided was that we would make them configurable. No one really does that, and it makes them incredibly cool. It gives them you know, the, the opportunity for people to express themselves and to you know, work out all of these different billions of combinations. And then Roger said, you know, how about we just uh, add an album to it so that people can collect them. And then we took that and ran and uh, decided to add things like uh, power to it, leaderboards, community engagement, goals. Like this, this will eventually be a whole game, even if there is no card game uh, battler that goes with it, right? And if we do do a uh, card game battler, it'll be most likely done as something that's a little bit more loose and uh, carefree, right? Like not, not like a competitive game where it's all super serious. The whole point of that is that uh, we want to be able to cater to both of those crowds. There are people that want the rare things. And then there are people that just want to be able to buy things. And we don't want people to have to uh, feel like they're forced to buy alphas. Right, And that's why there is no extra utility of an alpha besides the fact that it's limited edition. But it no longer becomes limited edition unless you make it limited edition, right? That's even with Pokemon cards, when they have first editions, that's the first run of the print job. After that, they're not first edition anymore. There's a, there's a second edition and a third edition, et cetera, et cetera. For us, the first edition is the alphas. And then second, third, and fourth is all rolled up into one long period because we don't have to actually print physical things. We can just mint it on demand so we can keep the alphas at an exclusive price. And there's a certain group of people that want to get that. And then there's other people who are going to want to do it you know, the other way. And, and the most important thing to remember is like, if you buy one alpha disc, you're going to get one or two Illuvatars in it, right? That no longer gives it anything close to the same luster as far as being able to go through and collect milestones and collections. And this is where, I mean, I, I've spent two hours with the council today trying to impress upon them that we have this whole functionality, which is why we delayed it from releasing last year to build out something that wasn't just a profile picture project, right? That was the whole point of it is we didn't want to just do profile pictures. And on top of that, it wasn't good enough to just have it be like really amazing art profile pictures. It's gotta be something better. It's gotta be something that really stands out in the community. People aped into things like Bored Apes and then realized that they got absolutely ripped off with, with that because it was a complete, you know, I mean, I mean, not not a scam, but like, what was there to it, right? Like, there there really wasn't anything to it. It was just I got my monkey, and I'm hoping that you know someone will like me because I've got this cool profile picture, right? It didn't really do anything for you. These are like digital cards. You can collect them, you can play with them. Eventually, we would like to have 
an additional game that you can play with them. And the whole point of that was that uh, we wanted to be able to cater to these two people. One of the things that I suggested to the community was, I really feel like we need to lower the prices so that people can buy lots of these things. And once they've bought lots of these things, they can actually start to really get into the game because maybe you get halfway through a particular collection or maybe you're almost up to a milestone or maybe if you just get one extra accessory, you'll be able to bond that and then you've covered off three different uh, collections. We want that sort of engagement rather than just I'm buying it because I think other people expect it to go up in value and that's the only thing I care about. There are some people that are like that, but how many projects are there out there that have shown how toxic and catastrophic that can be before we realize that we should go towards doing something that everyone can be proud of and enjoy it as an actual thing to to do, an actual hobby like collecting Pokemon cards. So that that that's why I feel like there definitely is a place for them to be alphas which is just another name for first edition and they're not really first edition if you don't get them first next question yep yep we'll uh bring up we got sneaky sneaky pokey let's go and yeah feel free to put your guys's hands up i'm reading the questions in general but we'll also take some of these people that are raising their hands and want to come up and talk so go hey, for guys. it welcome sneaky Thank you. Uh, I got two quick questions. So mm -hmm. uh, one question would be just to give a little bit more peace of mind at the very beginning of the sale. I think it might be a good idea maybe to guarantee 10 or 20 or 30 minutes buy window so that if we've got like a huge rush to get the alpha mega discs to allow people to... Um, to feel like they're going to miss out because bots are buying them up because um, there's only 20,000. I mean, I'm not sure if that's going to happen or not, um, but just a suggestion. Um, and then um, the second question really quickly is, is about misprints. If the, if the wave is going to last three months, how is it possible that we would still have an Iluvatar that hasn't been sold yet? Thanks. The the answer to the first one is we do have that provision. If you go onto the sale site and there is some available, so like if you go in at the start of the sale, then you put in your order, it will guarantee to be filled. What that does mean is that there is a possibility that more than that limited amount gets minted. And we feel that that is a reasonable a way to alleviate people's fears that they'll miss out. You go on, you go to mint it. There is a, I'm going to say like a 10 to 15 minute window whereby IMX won't be able to mint everything that we need them to mint instantly anyway. And while that queue goes through, it will still be showing to people on the live site that there is some available because they, it's, it's taking that live value. So that, 30 minute window that you're talking about i can't guarantee it to be 30 minute but there will be a period whereby you can get them and when people say like there's only you know twenty thousand, it's a lot of discs right like i mean it's still it's still a decent amount and the bots would have to put in multiple orders across uh, multiple accounts but you will also get yours put into the queue too so i would imagine that there's somewhere between you know I'm going to say between 10 and an hour, maybe. I, it depends on how, how good IMX's system is at uh, fulfilling orders at the time. We've got some good optimizations in the background, but there is still the fact that these things do have a, a physical time that it takes to get minted. So there will be that window. We will obviously try to make the start of the sale be such that as many people as possible can have access to them. but. I would be shocked if there's not some still available after 30 minutes, if for no other reason than it's going to take the system a while to fulfill those orders. And while it still shows that some are available, you'll be able to put in your own order. As for the second one, the answer is math. There are a hollow version of every single one of these in the system. There's 120,000 of them. 
there should be approximately 13 out of the 150 combinations that we're talking about that are still left. I've run a lot of calculations on this. It could be nine that are left. It could be that there's 16. But to answer the question, yeah, basic math. All right, thanks. Perfect. Yep. So we got a question from Ned here. Uh, Aluvatar Ethos has been that they're that they are unlimited mint and inclusive. Why put exclusive items then contradict that contradict that? Doesn't introducing a rare version of discs reduce the value of all other discs? Uh, I would say no. It doesn't reduce the value. the The point is that there's going to be two tiers of pricing, which means that let's say there's a fixed amount of money that goes into the ecosystem. Either that's all taken up by one type of disc or it's taken up by two. If there's less money in the system from people buying the expensive options, then that means that there'll be far fewer of the other ones printed, which means that necessarily at the end of that three month period, there will be fewer of them in circulation than what there would have been, which to me means that they will be less um, available, which means that I, I can't speculate on prices, but I w the idea that it will devalue them seems absurd. I think what people are actually thinking is that it will change their impression compared to what else is out there in the world, right? Like, I want this, you know, like all of a sudden if a Ferrari comes into existence, it doesn't make something that's not a Ferrari suddenly worse. And that seems to be the argument. Well, I guess this, uh, there's another question that's kind of the opposite of that, I guess. And, okay. uh, <laughs> yeah. or I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, good. yeah. Benet asked, you know, if you, we want to make alpha alphas more special, why not make a thousand of them and make them at a hundred x the price or something like that? How is a hundred thousand alphas special, and how does that not cater? Or how does that cater to that Web three side of the community? Okay, um, I I don't know how many would be considered special. I I leave that up to the council as far as like what the numbers are. I think for, for me, there's two parts of the question. One is the multiplier in terms of the price, and the other one is the, the quantity of them that are available, um, or, or more specifically, like the total price of it. In my opinion, maybe that is something valid. I mean, there's, there's, there's a hundred times the price seems insane. Um, I think that that would be very counter to what is trying to be done. But I don't know, there's probably some correct number out there and and you know we believe you know we spent two hours going over it today with the council and going through all of the parameters is it possible that there is a slightly better value out there of course you know we're not perfect but it seems to be hitting a pretty good sweet spot compared to um what it was previously and there's you know thousands of people in this community someone's going to say I want them to be a million dollars and there's only five of them. And another person's going to want to say, I want there to be five million and they're only a dollar. We're never going to please everyone, but we have to try and use some common sense to make it so that there is at least some sort of a, a balance found. And this proposal to me feels pretty damn close to that balance point. Okay. Um, yeah, like I said, guys, if you guys want to come up and ask questions, otherwise you can post them in general and I'll pick out as many as we can, as many as we While have we're time waiting, for. Um, someone asked in chat, and I'll bring it up here. It's not something that we can do immediately, but someone suggested that if they want to have a fully clean Aluvatar, then um, why can't we have sort of like a blank accessory that still has all of the advantages of it being an accessory in that it's a power multiplier? I'm certainly not <laughs> like 100% opposed to that. I think it makes me cry a little bit that people wouldn't want to, you know, customize it using all of the incredibly complicated and cool art that we've made. But if someone did want to do that, maybe we could do that as something that was, you know, a little bit more exclusive. It would have to be at a later date if 
anyone wants to add it to the current sale, then that's fine. But that would definitely push back the current sale to get the art team to uh, uh, be able to change the way that their systems work to, to allow for that just straight blank layer. Um, but we are planning on doing something like that. We don't have it implemented um, for promotional uh, discs where they will sort of come preloaded and they'll they'll have an accessory on it but um they will have like uh blocked out slots so that you can't add extra things to it and that's for some very obvious art reasons um but yeah like that's something that we could do so i don't know it's it's up to it's up to people if that's something that they wanted to push for but if that was popular i can't imagine adding those would be terribly hard to add it to another wave so it's something. Another one that I noticed quite a bit being brought up is uh, the concern around bots. Uh, how do you feel about that, I guess? Bots I buying like up them. all the alpha disks. <laughs> I, I don't like bots. But <laughs> for, for this, this is not the sort of uh, sale where you know, you've got individual items. So doing some sort of a reverse auction just doesn't make sense. I mean, I mean, you could you could do it, but it would just be insanely convoluted to have a hundred thousand <laughs> individual auctions and then constantly creating more auctions all of the time. It would be it would be insane. That is one way that we can combat them, and we end up combating them by not combating them. It's just that there's a price that people are willing to pay. So in the end, we don't combat bots by you know doing some clever hacker skills to say hey that wallet's a bot we're going to uh, stop them like we can start blacklisting after people get a lot of something but that's not what a bot is a bot is someone and technically we can't do that because we're an imx that would be up to them to uh implement those features they don't have that so from a technical point of view we couldn't but even if we could it's it's sort of like well like why why would we need to do that there's enough of these discs out there that people will be able to get them and as i've already said in another question if you get into the queue it doesn't matter if it runs out before it's your time to mint it you still get access to it so you'll be absolutely fine i think that uh bots are a much bigger concern when we're talking about layer one, where there are gas wars that go on and certain people can spend way more gas, there's none of that on layer two, right? You're not paying any gas, very quick and easy to do your transactions. You're not competing against someone. You're not trying to do like board apes where you have to spend like 50% of your um, purchase price in ETH. None of that exists. You just pay the certain amount, you get it for free and away you go. I don't understand why there's that many bots that would be willing to go in there and snap up $5 million worth of merchandise. That seems absolutely insane. Um, it would be a very risky thing for uh, a bot to do, especially if they happen to know, which again, they're not, they're not bots, it's not a computer. It's a person who is very well versed in the system. They will know now that they're not getting it exclusive. They're not like DDoSing everyone out of it. They would get some and everybody else would get them and it would just dilute it. And then they would be looking at it like, what was the point of me doing that? There will be whales who will buy a lot of them. And in my opinion, that's perfectly fine. You know, we're, we're not an anti-whale uh, team. All that we do is we say there shouldn't be any advantage to our games for people and we have stuck by that since the very beginning you don't get an advantage out of an alpha it's not more powerful it doesn't have a giant party hat on top of it it doesn't give you a lamborghini it's not going to get you a girlfriend all it is is something that is part of that first set and then the rest of them go out it's like the first print goes then the second print goes In my opinion when you get down to you know, 10 years down the line, yeah, they're absolutely going to be more valuable, but there's still going to be a massive amount of value in just being able to make a original atlas 
right? That original atlas or being able to mince some of those original things, that will be hugely rare, right? Because a lot of those atlases will already have a bunch of accessories on it and it'll be up to you to get exactly what someone else has done. Maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want to add different accessories. Maybe in 10 years time, there's different ones. So you need a fresh atlas to go and you can't get them because they're super, super rare, even if you get them out of a normal disc. And then there's a game behind it and there's all these different things that would be going on. Having normal discs, this is one of the biggest things that I spoke to the council about is like, no one seems to be thinking that there are other discs in the system. There absolutely are. And for anyone who wants to actually play the game, you will absolutely need them. There is no one who can just buy alphas and get everything done. Just purely by hearing the way that missed prints work, there will be around about 12. If you bought up literally everything, the average of your probabilities is that you'll still be 12 shorts of the 150. How are you gonna solve that? You have to go and buy at auction these crazy rare one of ones and boom, that's more revenue for the community and let people do it. Then another person like me goes and buys the normal ones because I just wanna sort of like fill up all of the collections. I get them for five times cheaper. It's like an absolute win for everyone. People who can't afford to buy the Lamborghini still get a car that happens to be literally just as fast. I don't know. To me, that makes sense. That was literally the next question. I was going to have you explain misprints. So. Question about Lamborghinis? No, misprints. So that worked out. <laughs> okay. What, what is the question? Uh, they were wondering how they worked and you just explained. Okay, so I will explain how the proposal suggests that they work because that's what we're going forward with. Um, the way that misprints work is after all of the items are purchased, there will be a certain amount of people that open them. There'll be some people that leave their uh, uh, discs unopened. This is just the alpha discs. The other ones, uh, they're not part of misprints uh, at all because those ones, they almost certainly will be one of everything made because you know they're five times cheaper. Um, with the alphas, we do want someone to potentially have the ability to finish a whole set with alphas. Unless we print a billion alphas or some, I, I don't know what the number is, there is still a chance that some of those won't come out of those discs. Now, at 120,000, which is what the proposal is, 100 plus 20,000 of the mega discs, my uh, simulations, say that it will be roughly 12 could be as low as eight could be as high as about 15 ish that won't be made right and there's a good chance that the ones that won't be made are the more uh, rare ones something like um the the rarest hollow ram fire blazing ram fire will be you know there, there's probably a more than 50 percent chance that no one will get an alpha version of that the problem with that is that it makes it feel a little bit bad that someone never has the opportunity to do that, right? It feels to me like every card should exist in the system. So we put in place this idea that we would generate a single one of the ones that haven't been minted and we will auction them off, right? And they will have a normal English auction, which goes up and up and up and up. This will happen around about three months after the sale begins and uh, people will be able to bid for them. And these will be like the, the creme de la creme. These are the absolute craziest. And I actually kind of hope in some of my simulations, there's an atlas that is in this misprint. And that's super rare because it's so common, right? The chances of no one getting an atlas is phenomenally rare, but I, I've seen it once in the simulations, which means that there could be a chance that someone's bidding on something super common, but it ends up being the most expensive thing in the game because it's just such a freak of nature anomaly. So it's a very cool uh, feature that we can uh, market really heavily. It's an extra part for the community to come together. Not everyone is going to be able to afford them. Like I said, there's only going to be 12, but there's still a really big cap to the wave, right? It's once that's done, 
we then can uh, move on into other things and start the whole process again. And what we're saying now is because people are allowed to keep their alpha disks indefinitely, that the sort of the, the negative consequence of that, like the positive, you get to keep your alpha disks indefinitely. That's great. That's always been positive. I've always thought that that would be a good thing. But when I designed this, I was weighing it up against the other side of the token, which is that uh, when you get these ones, there is a very small chance that someone with one of those unopened disks after the fact could open them and get one of the things that was in that uh, misprint. And the, the point is that there's a balance between those two. And it's very clear that the, both the council and the community feel like the much bigger advantage is to have the ability to retain them compared to having that chance that someone could buy one of those misprints at auction and then all of a sudden it no longer is a one of one, it becomes a one of two or something like that. And that's that's fine, right? Like I when I when I went through this, I told the council my opinions, but they said, nope, we think that that is incorrect. So that's the way that it works now. Hopefully that makes sense. Yep. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, just a quick one. Um, the limits on transactions, is it 10? I believe you said 10. Yeah. I mean, we can make yeah. that whatever we want. The point of it being 10 is again, I, I'm not going to tell you guys, Hey, we solved botting because it's still possible that someone could do it, but it becomes a little bit harder. They have to, you know, set up a whole bunch of scripts to be able to, you know, uh, do these and it slows down the batching process. Therefore, if there is a big spike at the start, it extends that window whereby people can buy disks. So while it's not a hard stop on bots, which doesn't exist, you can't actually do it. Um, it's a, it's a pretty decent soft stop on them. And for the average person, we don't expect that there's that many people out there that are trying to mint more than you know, 10 at a time for the average person. Cause I mean, we're still talking that 10 at a time would be what, like maybe 2000 something dollars us or something like that. So it's, it's a decent chunk of change. I don't think everyone's in, in that boat It's certainly not going to be the average one. And for those people who really want to get 20 or 30 or 40, just put in another order for them and you'll be fine. It's just a little bit of an inconvenience to make sure that the people at the lower end of the spectrum have a little bit longer. Good deal. Um, we got Bairami that wants to come up and ask a question. Mm -hmm. And I believe... One question, uh, yeah, not, not two Yes, questions. one question, please, guys. And I believe he just had a kid, so congratulations. Congratulations. Welcome to No Sleep Show. Hi. Hey. Hello. Hey. Uh, so I, ha I have one quick question. Mm -hmm. What happened to the physical portrait that were supposed to be given with a, with back in July? There was, that was the idea, I think. Like, uh, with every elevator, you have uh, one physical uh, box with stuff. I don't know. I think he's talking about the disc plates. But that yeah, was yeah. something that you have to purchase, yeah? Yeah, it's something separate. They yeah. they weren't they weren't just included with your uh it's like a a feature you can take your Aluvatar and you can get it printed on mm -hmm. a disc plate. You can buy it, you know, separate. Yep. It's not something when we would we be able to buy them though? Do like do we have a date oh, okay. or is, are they ready oh, now? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um so so they won't be Originally, the plan was to get the store done before the Iluvatar's sale. They were both pretty close, but if you look through my blogs, it was always showing that the store would be done first. There's a bunch of things that we need to get organized with the store just to make sure that that one's really good because, you know, let, let's say that I stuff something up with a calculation. There are ways for us to sort of fix digital things with non-digital things it's a little bit tougher. So we just want to make sure that we get everything like properly, properly set up. So uh, you won't have this, at least 
it's it's not my understanding that the store will be available by March 7th. I think that it'll be after that, but you will absolutely be able to go and print one. The the beauty about this is only you will be able to print the Aluvatars that you own. Um, I don't believe that we've gotten to a final state on exactly what that means. And and what I mean by that is if we wanted them to be truly unique prints, or not unique prints, but like, you know, one print per um, NFT, then what we would have to do is track that NFT and say that NFT is no longer able to be printed because someone has already done that print. Um, that feels a little bit unintuitive because then if you sell it to someone else, we would have to do a lot of notifications to let you know that you'd be selling one that has already had that sort of uh, thing consumed. But maybe it's not too much of, of an issue to just let people print it no matter what, because obviously there's a price associated with it. It's yours. You might want to do it. So I, I don't know where that is at at the moment. I, I haven't really thought about it myself. So there are a few options there. Feel free to let us it's know what your thoughts on that it's ah, kind of a cool right, idea right. though. Sorry. If you it's kind of a cool idea if you're only able to or like, you know, it adds two different selling points, you know, like if you want to sell it if, if it had been like claimed or unclaimed. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if it, if it had been and unclaimed is a very common thing. We 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 do that in the world quite often with many things. It's not like it would be that hard for us um to to implement. Uh, the reason why I'm that that would be my preference. The reason why I'm scared to do that is because every single time we come up with something where we say yes, but we need to put some sort of a notification so that when someone gets it, they know what's going on. Invariably, I get about a hundred messages from people saying, "I got this," or "I thought this was going to be the case," and it was changed. And really what's happened is they just haven't been bothered to read the gigantic warning that we put on something. And so I'm less convinced that our gigantic warnings are going to be <laughs> valuable. And that, that, that was my original reason behind why I was scared about misprints being able to sort of be duplicated by people after the fact. Because if you get some, you know, giant whale going in there and we get some record price, you know, misprint has gone out for like, you know, $10,000, $50,000 or whatever it happens to be. And then the next day someone <laughs> opens a, uh, um, an alpha from the first wave and they it's go, not one of one. and then they come back to us <laughs> and they say, I spent hundred thousand dollars on this misprint. And now I look onto the system and there's two of them. What the hell? You said there was one. And then we say, no, we didn't say there was one. We said, there's a small chance that people hoarding those discs could eventually open it and have that pop out of it and so therefore you know you you knew what you were getting into but what this community has said over and over again is we don't know what we're getting into so you can't put warnings you just have to magically know what we want and make it exactly that and it's very hard it's it's really hard to design things when there's that i guess level of stubbornness that i refuse to read but i'll still be angry when i am under one implication uh, uh, and, and it turns out to be another mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, like, you know. we, we had our ama the other day and i said i fight with the community all of the time and here we go <laughs> at least i'm holding true to my word yeah yeah it's been a it's been a good day so far so yep Looks let's like uh vetamore is up here yep ex council member vetamore yo what's up hi um so i've been arguing with kieran in I iop chat and he's mm -hmm. slowly starting to convince me um I'm sort okay. of, I'm sort of there, but the the only one thing, question, Vetamore. It's one thing. It's one thing. thing I swear. <laughs> but the the, the the only thing that I'm I just I can't break into my thick skull is mm -hmm. like what what is the actual need 
for the alphas like in the first place beyond mm -hmm. of, like I, i'm a big fan of them in the fact that they create like an initial demand in the beginning of the three months but i don't mm -hmm. like the fact that they take away the the first um edition rights to the rest of the stuff that is sold in that three months because they're they're by de facto second editions if they're not alphas yes, yes that's correct so, so so the, the the general idea, like, I mean, Magic the Gathering have alphas, Pokemon have first editions. I saw your message in there that, like, you can buy as many first editions as you want. That's not true. They have runs in Pokemon that are a fixed amount that goes through the printer. And then once they all go out to the stores, they do a second print, but they're not first editions. Um, I think what most people think about when they think of Pokemon is the first set right? Those, those original ones in, in the first set. And we will have that as well, uh, but they're, they're a, a separate thing, right? There's, there's the first wave in the first set. Um, there's the first set in general, but these are about someone, these are a flex, right? It's not about getting something that is old, about getting something that hasn't been around for a while. And so there's not that many of them around. This is about flexing and saying that someone can get something that is limited where the other things are not. And that mentality, it's very clear that that mentality works because the second that we started saying that, I think someone <laughs> put, put out a meme that was the, you know, that drowning meme where it's like, you know, alphas up here, everybody wants an alpha. And then the normal ones, it's like, screw you, you're at the, the bottom of the pool as a skeleton. Um, the whole point of it is, and this is why I think having a higher multiplier is actually better. There are certain people in the community that have enough money that what they want is to just have something that other people don't, right? But for us, we also want to look after the community where a lot of the people can't afford or don't want to spend such a hard, like a large amount and we want them to play the game, right? So the idea is that to play the game, if you buy one, I, and I think this is probably like, I'm not, I'm not saying it's like people's thick skulls. I just think it's such a, a latency in people's thinking where they're so used to these profile picture projects where it's like i just want my one profile picture that's not a Luvitas. a Luvitas is a collection of cards and there's a lot of them and there's billions of combinations and you're not meant to have one right when initially pitched it was meant oh. however that doesn't work for us because we don't have that one base this is not eth lizards it's not bored apes it's not any of them nor would I ever want it to be one of them because, I mean, to be honest, they're all just, they're insane, right? Like it's, it's just rarity for rarity's sake, but there are people in the community that want rarity for rarity's sake. And that's what an alpha is. It's you get in early, you get a limited quantity of them. And then for everybody else, you get to go buy, you know, 10, 30, 50, 100 packs and start to flip through them and me and the people on the project that are playing with it and watching the unboxings and, and stuff like that, get that feeling of putting it into Pokemon cards or like a, a card game sort of a situation. Whereas I think there's just a lot of people in the community that are stuck on, well, why would I get a Bored Ape when I can get a Bored Ape Plus, right? In those situations, yeah, I get it. There shouldn't be Bored Apes and Bored Apes Plus, but for us, there is a fundamental need for people to be able to get a reasonable amount of their collection completed. And the more that they can get completed, the more that they'll start to look desperately for those other ones. And I guarantee you, they're not even going to be thinking about whether they're alphas or not, because they're just going to be looking for that dopamine hit of, boom, I just got the milestone for all of the atlases, right? I've been, I've been looking for that rambunctious atlas for so long. I finally picked him up, boom. I just got one, two, three on my Axolotl uh, collection. That milestone is done. I got an extra 5,000 points from it. Now my collection is nearly complete or maybe it is complete. And then boom, when I get that collection complete, more points, 
Now I've moved up from 50th on the leaderboard up to, you know, 25th. And it's like, that's where we want the majority of people going is trying to look at, hey, I'm the sort of person who literally has all of the fire alluvials collected, right? And that will be pretty rare. Now, how many people are going to have all alpha fires? Probably zero, right? Like, that's what I was trying to tell the council today. Like, this is why I feel like we needed to reduce the prices overall rather than worry too much about the the multiplier because if you get one of them, you're going to be like, okay, I got one alpha pack and now I've got, you know, I've got one Archeleon. Great. And then you go and put it in your album and you're like, my album is a ghost land, right? You want people to get a mix of them even the richest person out there, and I don't know, maybe some rich guy is going to try and prove me wrong and say, fuck you, Aaron, I'm going to get everything in alphas. Good luck, buddy. I don't think that they will, right? Even when it was when it was 25,000 and 5,000, I thought that that was going to be like zero chance at 100,000 and 20,000. I still think that that is absolutely going to be a ridiculously tough feat for anyone to get a whole collection of alphas. So therefore people should start looking at collecting, you know, all the hollows, right? You can get a whole hollow collection, still very rare, but you might be able to do it. Maybe not the whole hollow collection. Maybe you want to just look at, you know, getting all of a particular class because then that gives you a reward where you get a special border that no one else has, right? These are the sort of flexes that you can have in our system. And none of that needs you to have the alphas. They're just there for those people who want to have the absolute uh, rarest things in existence. And by allowing there to be that two separate people in the project, we'll be able to generate more revenue keep a lot of people happy because it allows us to put the prices down for the main ones. And in my opinion, maybe I'm wrong, but I reckon in like two months time, we will have exactly what we expected happening with the land sale, which is a bunch of people going, shit, I want to get that one and I want to get this one. And they start to form conspiracies around, oh, who's the guy who has that one in the middle? It'll be the same thing, but it'll be like, someone keeps hoarding all of the dots backgrounds in existence because he wants to be the only one that can get that rare nft for collecting that line and then someone would be like i know where he lives and there'll be all of this chaos surrounding it which is really good for the project and great for engagement overall i don't think that you um can can get that same level of re revenue generation and engagement if you just have one product i think you get a much better mix by allowing certain people to go ham on the first ones and say, ha ha ha, I've got first of everything and you don't. And to those people, I'll say too good. I, I won't be getting many of the, the alphas. I'll just be buying just hundreds of the other packs so that I can actually get the collection complete. Because for me, the dopamine hit is not about having you know, a couple of alphas or, or, or many alphas, or even being like, well, I'm going to hold it for a year and then flip it for a higher price. I would never sell it even if I had it. I just want to be the sort of person who can either be on the leaderboard or at least have some of my collections complete. Yeah, I will be those people, by the way. Oh, yeah, oh, I, think... I mean, there's people out there that will try which is why kind of... which is why we did it right like there mm. there obviously is going to be a portion of the community and the the biggest the reason Aluvatars even exists is for us to or at least in the first place when it was just meant to be a pfp project was i identified that there was a massive amount of there was this huge gap of nft collectors that were not interested in alluvium and so this was a way for us to say hey come on in we also have an nft project and by the way we also have these really cool games and try and bring them into the funnel that way right now one of the things that we identified 
without having the alphas is those NFT collectors will look at it and go, mm, well, I don't really care about playing this game. All I care about is making a profit and flipping it and doing what Aaron's saying and, and holding it so it's unopened and then everyone opens them and then they've got the only ones left. So then they can sell it for 100x, all of that kind of stuff. If we take that away by making them unlimited, then we lose that audience, right? Now, do we want to lose that audience or do we want to really bridge that gap and get these NFT whales in? And I think the answer is yes, we do, especially when it doesn't affect the core game. There's no additional utility for these alphas. They literally just have a stand, right? When you're collecting, you're going to be sitting there and you're like, okay, I've got my album out and I spent all of my money on these alphas and now I have four cards. Woohoo. Whereas other people are going to be like, boom, I'm going sky high on the leaderboard. I'm collecting all of these things. It's a really nice experience. You start feeling like you're actually getting somewhere. You've got progress. They're two totally different types of people. And I know it because I am one of those people that has gone into projects and tried to flip NFTs for a profit. And I had absolutely no care whatsoever about the utility or whatever of what the actual NFT did, even though 99.9% .9 of NFT projects have no utility, even if they did, I would, you know, I'm not buying a board ape so I can play Dookie Dash. I, I can assure you that I'm doing it so I can flip it. And, uh, and that's okay, right? We want to cater to those people, but at the same time, we don't, you know, we, we also need to cater to the people that actually want to play games. That's the core audience that we have, obviously. And so this hits the best of both worlds. And that's why I think it's a good idea to have alphas. Do we have another okay. question? Yeah, yeah, Crypto Womble. Come on up. Come on down. I think you got to hit a button to accept crypto. There you go. And you're on mute. So. Press the little microphone thing somewhere. There you go. You're very, very quiet. Yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, you can. Yep. Uh, yeah. Slightly. Oh, sorry. Do I, do I, am I louder now? Yes. You're a little bit louder, but you, you sound like you're in the middle of the MCG and we're up in the stands. Okay. 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 You can turn him up manually, guys. You can right-click uh, his name and turn him up manually. How, how, how about now? Better. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, better. Um, I, just, I just want to say uh, I'm like 50 years old and I'm not your normal young gamer, so uh, I've, I've got 70% of my portfolio in Alluvium. Um, the other 30% is IMX. I've got a, a mega land. I've got uh, four plots in Abyssal Basin. And um, I love the idea of something really, really exclusive. Oh, sorry. It's my bird in the background. Um, but right. I really love something. I, I, I have no intention of ever flipping it. And it will be something really, really personal for me. And so I just wanted to go. I don't care about all the complexities of, you know, the rarities and all that kind of thing. I'm just looking at it purely from uh, uh, this is something that I hold very, very dear. That's all. So, but that's an old person's thing. But, uh, but yeah, that's it. I, I'm old too, so it's it's all good. It's good to have some other old people here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we're trying to, to do that. And I mean, there is different levels of rarity across the board. Keep in mind that even with 100,000 uh, alphas, I'm still suggesting that there's going to be approximately 12, like super ridiculously, insanely rare ones in that they're one of ones that get auctioned off. And, you know, auctions tend to be a little bit crazy. And sometimes people get their you know, their egos get in the way and things get pumped up to ridiculously high prices. So there could be some super rare items out there. 
And if that's not your cup of tea, maybe you don't have the, the funds to get that level of rarity, then you can have the next level down from that. And then the next level down, we're really trying to sort of cater to everyone while at the same time having this, you know, baseline of cheaper things and people will collect them, right? Like I, I, yeah. I didn't collect Pokemon cards until Kieran bought some for my daughters and now I do, right? Yeah. Other people will feel exactly the same way about this. They have a connection to Alluvium. They really like the, the artwork. I would dare say that our artwork is a significant level higher than a Pokemon card. I'd say it's, yeah. you know, maybe an order of magnitude. Um, <laughs> it's easily on the level of something like a, a Yannick, uh, sorry, a, um, a Magic the Gathering. And so I think what will happen is people will see these and then they'll be like, yeah, I might as well just get a pack. And then they'll get another one. And then they'll get another one. And then they'll get another one. And all of a sudden, they'll be, you know, 50 packs in. And we really want there to be people buying, you know, 50, 100 packs and trying to get as many of the Illuvatars as they possibly can. There's, there's going to be a lot, right? There's, there's yeah. 156 in the first set. And remember, there's uh, six different variations of all of those uh Iluvatars, right because you've got the two rarities so the the three rarities of the expression and the two of the holographics 156 times six you got like 936 there's nearly a thousand in the first set to collect it's going to take some discs and that's why i suggest that for the for the average um you know whale out there it's it's going to be tough. You're going to be filling in your set at least at the beginning with some normies, with a lot of normies, and then you'll have to sort of pick them off over time. You try and wait for something to come on the market that's at the right price. And you know, unless you're Elon Musk, it's going to be a journey for you to to get all of those alphas. And mm -hmm. I'll go out on a limb and say that Kieran. I don't think that you'll have a set of all alphas. <laughs> so, ju but just to put a, a, a finer point on the the pricing, right? Like, I I don't think anyone is having an issue with misprints, for example, because there's going to be twelve of them. They're going to be an auction. I think people are, uh, are out there are saying those are going to go for such an exorbitant amount of money that it's completely out of my reach. So in fact, I actually want them to go for the most amount of money possible because it's going to fill up the treasury, right? And then if a Louboutin goes really, really well and we fill up that $15 million, it's going to go back to stakers, right? It's the same thing here. With the alphas, they don't do anything extra. And so some people out there are going to be willing to pay 5x more. Now, the only argument that I can see that makes sense is if people were to say, you know what, let's try and generate as much revenue or burn as much SIRV2 as possible. Let's actually put them up to 10x or 15x. That would make sense to me. But the argument of, hey, let's make them only 1.5 times it seems insane right because then every single person is going to buy them there's going to be a whole bunch of people who are upset but i think what we've tried to do as the council is we've tried to price it at a point where most normal people will think you know what for for a stamp and it being rarer i'm not going to spend five times the price, right? Like that just doesn't make sense to me. And that's someone like Aaron and that's fine. But there are going to be a portion of people and I think it's still going to be, you know, enough for us to sell out at this price of, uh, of 5X that do want that, right? And that is why it's the best of both worlds, right? But again, if people, uh, if the community was to say, you know what, we understand that now. Let's actually try and maximize what we can get out of these things. Then, because we we get it right, we're we're now 
locked in on the collection game, that seems a hell of a lot more fun than, you know, just trying to sit on something that might go up in value over time and speculating, then yeah, let's look at that. But we analyzed it for, you know, several hours today. And we think that we've, we've reached that happy medium where they'll still sell out at that price. And, you know, people will, will think, you know what, it, it is a little bit ridiculous, like 5X, you know, I'm just going to go with the standard. And it doesn't matter, like if it, if it goes well or the, the opposite, then there's six more waves in this set, right? So let's say that it's slightly off in terms of the percentages or the rarities or, you know, anything. We will adjust. You guys have seen, look at private beta one versus private beta two. When you guys see private beta three, you'll be like, oh my God, look at all of the things that they've improved with it. That's what we do. We, we make something and we try to make it as good as possible. And then instead of just going, eh, screw you, it's, it's out there. If, it, if people don't like it, we can't handle that. So we just make it better and better and better. Same thing if, if the price ends up going up, astronomically or if the price ends up going down or whatever these things are configurable and we want to make it so that it's fair for everyone like that's yep. that is our aim always hmm. we got some questions rich yep josh eth dot eth <laughs> hi guys like <clears throat> yeah i've lost my voice a little bit because i was talking so much last night so um I just want to say, like, I think it's a massive step in the right direction. I think the changes just collate all of the community feedback that was given last night to the council and in the chat. And I think you've come across like a happy medium here. I think certainly the lowering of all the prices of the discs makes people that are only going to buy one or two, three discs, you know, maybe they're going to try to finish more pages now. And because they finished a couple of pages, they're more likely to then try and finish the whole album. So I think it's set positive, you know, as a whole. So, and I wanted to say, you know, thank you to the council and the team for getting this out super quick and kind of working overtime. You know, it's, it's really, really a positive thing to see. We're always on anyway, there's no... Yeah, it's not really overtime when you're, <laughs> when you're always working. But yeah, no, it's, it <laughs> certainly wasn't... I got up at like seven or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I shouldn't say that. Uh, in, in terms of from team perspective, maybe, but uh, the council, we've met, uh, it must be, it feels like two times a day. But uh, so, yeah, definitely thank you to the other council members. They've been putting in a lot of hard yards. The only question I have is that I'd want to make clear, because that's not clear, the um, <clears throat> auction. The auction's going to be, I imagine, ETH only, um, mm -hmm. just as it would uh, be. No, no, for... that's, that's, um, uh, that is not the current state, but Kieran and I did discuss that yesterday. I can only tell you my thoughts on it. My thought is that uh, the, the only one that shouldn't include silv uh the promo discs and that's just purely because there's another partner involved in there and uh, it's not for them to value silv2 at the price of um ilv so in my opinion it should be all of them have silv2 but that isn't confirmed yet i mean yeah so I my my stance on that is similar to how the tier fives uh, with land are only able to be obtained in ETH. I think, you know, while SRV2 is great when we burn it, what is, and especially because we're looking at, uh, you know, filling the treasury and we can only do that with ETH, it doesn't help us if we get SRV2. My preference would be that let's say Aaron is right and there's only you know 11 or 12 of these auctions that are going to be going on I would assume that they're going to go for astronomical prices prices that everyone oh well let's call it the the vast majority can agree would price them out and so therefore they should switch to not for me I want that at a low price to I want to see these things bought for the highest price possible so we can get the treasury filled back up because then we have more runway for building games etc 
I, I would say the people I've spoke to in the community, and this is obviously a small data set, so I mean, take my word with a pinch of salt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would the twelve I would, people would, we play golf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say that nobody would have a problem with you know having it ETH only. That's what Tier Five land is. This is kind of a special you know auction for those you know one of question mark one of one potentially. I wouldn't think anybody would have a problem with them being ETH only. Um, yeah, it's it's outside of yeah. the you know scope of the product mainly. So I, th I don't see anybody having a problem. But you know, if you guys think that there's two differences of opinion, maybe again you need to do some sort of uh, snapshot or get people's sentiment on that. I'm I'm not on the council, so it doesn't yeah, matter what so I think. It would just be. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll just we'll just take that to the council. We'll vote on it. I don't. I actually haven't spoken. It, it literally was a conversation yesterday, and yesterday feels like today. So I, mm. I haven't had a chance to speak to him about that. But uh, yeah, I'm certainly in favour of that just being ETH. I, I'm not strongly opposed to that. By the way, it, it's just I, I'd say I'm sixty forty. So. <laughs> Yeah, very, very similar to my thoughts on the saving the packs, right? I, in the end, it wasn't like I fought the council on it. Um, we should good have... deal. I mean, we have no more questions. I thought we had one more. No, he said that he read the revised proposal and it answered his questions. Okay. Do we have uh, the only other one uh, I was thinking back um, was like. Uh... Where did he go? He was asking about can like I, if we had a. Can I just ask if if there's no more questions, can everyone jump into uh, the proposal chat? Uh, now that you've had a chance to speak to Aaron, I've been speaking to a bunch of people in uh, in that thread. Could you all go in and either put a thumbs down or a thumbs up? It obviously, you know, while we have the governance structure and the council, we obviously want to do things the right way for the majority of the council uh, of the token holders so you know as community members jump in there if you don't like what what the new proposal is please you know thumbs down and we can go back to the drawing board if you are comfortable with it now because you have more information give it a thumbs up and uh, that just allows us to vote on this quickly so there's less you know speculation and uh confusion out there can you hear me oh mm -hmm. yes oh, we're good now <laughs> um yeah no there was only one other question about um like uh how much silv2 we were looking like what the numbers were on how much we thought we would be burning oh. Can Kieran not hear me? Yeah. Kieran, are you there? Yeah. Did you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> Rich is asking how much SLV we're expecting to burn. Oh, weird. Sorry, I, I can't hear Rich. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, that's I'm most... expecting us to burn something. <sighs> Again, it's, you know. Please don't hold me to this, but I'm expecting somewhere between sixty thousand and uh, and eighty thousand. Okay. And I'm I next contestant on the Price Is Right, so I say eighty thousand and one. I can't <laughs> actually hear Rich. If you, um, yeah, that's so weird. It's like Twitter Spaces. It's uh, it's bugging me. Come on down. Okay, um, is that all the questions? Yeah, I think we're at, and we're at about an hour too. So good. Um, yeah, just just on behalf of the community and the council and everyone, thanks to both of you for coming up on such short notice and and yeah, helping everyone out pretty much. Anytime you guys need me to abuse you, I'm always here. I love it. All good. All right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>